Welcome back to Max Garage. If you like what you see here today, don't forget to like, share, subscribe, all those good things that help me out. Today I'm going to be going over torque wrenches. My background is automotive. This definitely applies to the automotive world, but it also applies to pretty much anything where you need to torque fasteners. So I'm going to go through several different uh, varieties of torque wrenches, what's positive or negative about either one of them, and I'm not going to tell you which ones you need to buy. That's up to you to figure out. I will say that all of these I'm going to show you I personally own. So some of them I would probably buy again. Some of them I probably wouldn't. So I'm going to start out with the cheapest unit here. And this would be, uh, I call them a flex beam torque wrench. So basically what you've got is two beams. This is a calibrated flexible beam and then you've got a pointer. So as you twist it, I'm gonna bend it a little bit. This is a super cheap torque wrench. I'm not gonna to worry too much about it. As you put it on a faster and twist on it, this beam moves out. You've got a scale right here. One of the advantages to this torque wrench, and actually I made it closer when I just did that, is that it's cheap. Another major advantage to this is I can do something like that. That is the only torque wrench that I'm going to throw on the ground. Um, the reality is that as long as you don't heat this flexible beam, these are almost indestructible. So actually it landed and the scale is still at zero. So this thing is totally fine. As long as you're not binding up on this thing, I mean, this could be Z-shaped. As long as it points back to zero when you start and you haven't heated this beam, these things are super tough. They're also super cheap. I guess they start out super cheap. They actually get pretty expensive. This is a pretty cheap one. So they go anywhere from like $20 up to, I saw a couple for 500 when I was looking at these. So I did look up the prices. They're not perfect. There's probably some outside either way, but a good general range for these is probably like 20 to 75 bucks. You can pick up one of these flex beam style torque wrenches. Another advantage of this flex beam style is it's really good for training. So I've done a lot of uh, teaching in the automotive world and these torque wrenches are really good for training because you have to be very smooth and really pay attention to what's going on. So if you've got somebody that's learning, these actually make a pretty good, pretty good wrench to start with. One of the big things is you have to pull on the point that it's designed to be pulled on. So this one's got a really small ball on here. Some of them will have like a plastic handle with a pin. You don't want to get that off center so you're hitting the handle on it rather than the pin. And that has to do with the fact that it's calibrated on the bend of this whole main beam. So there you go. I actually kind of like these. Obviously I own it. I own one. Uh, one more thing that I almost forgot to say is rotating torques. The reason I own this particular one is for rotating torques. I have another torque wrench that you can do rotating torque with, but I didn't have it, so I bought this off Amazon and that's what I used it for. Now when I say rotating torque, if you have something that spins that has a specified value, one of the big things you'll do in the automotive world would be axle setup. So your pinion bearings will have a, well actually the whole axle, but the pinion bearings will have a rotating torque. So what you do is you actually break it loose, you spin it, and you watch how much torque it takes to spin that. So that's kind of a calibration of bearing preload in that particular case. And uh, that's what I have this one for is that. But again, only one I'm gonna throw on the ground because this is the only one that is just dirt simple and tough. All right, so let's move on. The next torque wrench is a dial torque wrench. This is very much the same as that flex beam, only it has a bunch of mechanism inside of here and it's got a dial on the face that you read rather than the pointer and the scale. Realistically, pretty much everything that I said about the flex beam also applies to this, except for it's not cheap and it's not tough. Uh, I have had one of these torque wrenches and this one is more in like an engine rotating torque size. This is in foot pounds. So let's say you were building an engine and you wanted to test the 
drag of each piston as you installed it or the rotating force required to turn it as you add different components. That's what we would use this one for. And they run anywhere from like $100 up to probably about $600. Um, not super simple, not super cheap. And this is actually the only style of torque wrench that has ever uh, caused me to build something wrong, I guess would be the way that I would say it. So I had one of these that the calibration was off on. I was setting up a pinion bearing and uh, because it was wrong, it was in my own truck, I burnt up the pinion bearings in a very short period of time. I uh, got a different torque wrench and found that, and then by doing an A-B comparison with the one that I was using and the dial style torque wrench, I found that the dial torque wrench I was using was off. So this is a dial torque wrench. Honestly, probably the least likely one that you will buy in the automotive world. Um, I already have it, so it's not going anywhere, but Honestly, I would probably buy a flex beam over one of these because they are cheaper and you just don't use them that often. Again, really good for training because you have to be very methodical about how you're torquing to read the values on one of these torque wrenches. The next one up here is probably the one you are most familiar with. And honestly, if you are learning how to torque stuff, this is probably about the worst torque wrench you can can train on. Then these torque wrenches, and I see it all the time, they instill bad habits. When you're properly torquing a faster, you want it to be very smooth and very even pressure that you're applying. People tend to jerk on these, jump on them. They don't really have enough strength to torque to the value they're trying to do most of the time, and it gives you inaccurate readings. Another thing is that it'll go click, and then people will turn it another eighth of a turn. So really bad for training. Um, I know that's probably not going to be a real popular answer on this one, but if I was using torque wrenches as a training tool to train new mechanics, this is pretty much my last choice. Now in the real world, I use this torque wrench far more than any of the other ones that I'm going to show you. And the reason I do that is because it's fast, it's effective, and um, for a long time, these were the most common tool you could buy. So the price range on these varies pretty wildly. They go anywhere from like $40 to $600. This particular one that I'm holding right here, this is used, this runs 50 to 250 foot pounds. When I bought this, oh shoot, 15 years ago, they had a sale on them for us. And I think I paid right around $100. This exact same wrench from Snap-on today is right around $425. Um, so just like anything else, you typically kind of get what you pay for. Can you go to a discount tool supply place and buy one of these for 40 bucks? Sure. Is it going to be better than having no torque wrench at all? Hopefully. Is it something that I would use for real precision work at that price? I wouldn't. You do what you want. Um, one of the big things for having one of these that last is that after you use it, you always want to bring this down and zero it out, and that has to do with the spring action inside of here. So there are some that you don't have to, but if you've got this twist handle clicker style torque wrench, you always want to zero them out after you're done using the wrench, and it will stay accurate for a long time. Uh, this one is, like I said, 15 years old. It's been a little while since I've had it calibrated but it has stayed perfectly calibrated for a long time. I probably am due to have it checked again, but I'm not really concerned. I'm sure it will still be good. All right, so I guess this is as good a time as any to bring this up. These come in a wide variety of ranges. This one runs in a 50 to 250 range for foot pounds. This one runs 40 to 200 inch pounds. So both clicker torque wrenches, Huge difference on the torque reading that they are useful for. And that goes for all of these. They come in different sizes. So, um, in fact, actually the dial torque wrench, the biggest torque wrench or the highest torque wrench rating that I've got in the shop is a dial that goes up to 600 foot-pounds. Um, 
So, yeah, so there's also the variety of size. Get the size that fits the job you're doing. These clicker torque crunches, in particular, are the most accurate in the middle of the range. So for this one that runs 50 to 250, uh, what would be the middle of that? 150, so right about 150 would be your highest accuracy on this wrench. Towards the edges, they get a little bit off. And I already put it away, I'm not grabbing it again, but one of the drawbacks to the clicker is that they cannot be used for rotating torque. So if you're doing an application where you need rotating torque, you need either that flex beam or the dial. Now, along with those, a lot of what we've got for fasteners on automotive applications today are what we would call a torque angle bolt. So this is a really simplistic angle gauge. All it does is you've got a pointer that rotates with the, uh, with the fastener. So this is basically just a really short extension. You put a socket on this side, a breaker bar on this side, and in the center here, we've got a pointer that you can move around. So if we have a bolt, so if we have a bolt that maybe specifies 40 foot pounds and then 90 degree twist, you would line this up, you would load it up to the right place, you would zero your gauge. So we got that at zero, and then you would use this clamp to hold the scale in place and then you would rotate it out to 90 degrees. So that is a torque angle gauge if you're doing modern cylinder heads would be one of the big things that come to mind for this. But if you're doing any kind of bolt that specifies a torque and an angle, this is the angle gauge you should be using to do that with. Um, I'm sure there's other styles of these out there. In fact, there are some digital ones. I don't have a digital angle gauge. Well, I kind of do. I'll get to that in a minute. But they make these that are just this analog with a point, movable pointer and a scale. They also make them in digital. Oh, what are these wrong? This, this style right here is like 20 bucks. Um, and this is what I had at first. So when I first started, I had a clicker torque wrench. I think I had a dial torque wrench. And, uh, and then I had this for my angle. So that was kind of a pretty common thing. The, angle tor the torque angle stuff was pretty new at that point. But that's what I used for quite a while. Um, again, this one is like, you can buy one of these for like 20 bucks off Amazon or wherever you buy for your stuff. Or if you go to the digital ones, they can run anywhere from like $100 to $250 for the digital angle gauges. And you can use this with any of the three torque crunches I showed you already. So you can use a beam style, a dial style, or a clicker torque crunch, and then use this style of angle finder to work with that. And then the last type of torque wrench that I'm going to show you is probably about the newest torque of these we have. And as I open up my case, I'm going to show you this. I don't leave my batteries in this wrench. One, because I don't use it every day. And two, because this torque wrench costs like $600. And I'm not going to let $3 worth of batteries corrode inside this $600 tool and destroy it. So if you buy one of these and you don't use it a whole lot, which I don't use it a whole lot. I do use it, but not every day. Keep your batteries out because if they corrode inside of here, you wreck the tool and it's just not worth that. Uh, in fact, I can say that about pretty much all of my battery tools, unless it's a super cheap tool that I just don't care about, I tend to take the batteries out of my, my, uh, my more expensive battery powered devices because I don't want to wreck the tool for, you know, $3 worth of AA batteries. All right, so these things are expensive. This is not the earliest one, but this is also a snap-on uh, torque wrench. These have been around for quite a while at this point. The, um, one of the advantages to this, if you are looking at it from a teaching or learning standpoint, is these are really good for training. Uh, they have light up uh, bulbs that tell you when you're getting close. 
and they also tell you what your final torque reading is. So if you're trying to get to 100 foot-pounds and you torque on this thing, it'll go green and then it'll tell you exactly what you actually torqued it to, which might be like 101.3 or something foot-pounds, which is really cool for training because you can see exactly what you're doing. Really good for training and uh, that's one of the things that I like about them. Uh, these things, there are different varieties out now. Uh, when I bought this one, I think this was about the only option you really had. And they run anywhere from about $200 to $700. And uh, that's in your normal automotive range. You get into a really big size on any of this stuff, it's going to be more expensive. But that's your kind of price range on the automotive side stuff. Um, because they've been around for a while, the prices are starting to come down. One of your other upsides to this is that it has a digital torque angle gauge built into it. So if you have those torque angle bolts that I was talking about earlier, you can set this up to read angles as well. So, and it's got a ratcheting head, you can ratchet, it does not screw up the torque angle. Um, really useful for using for when you're doing stuff like that. In fact, that's probably where I use this the most. If I have a bolt that's going to take a torque and an angle, I just go ahead and get this wrench out. If I have something that is going to just be a set torque value, I just grab my clicker and use that most of the time. Uh, really wide range of uh, readings on this one. I can't remember for sure without firing it up and checking it, but I think this one runs from about 12 and a half up to 250 foot pounds and uh, then it has the angle portion on top of that. Another slight downside to this one perhaps is that you can't really do a rotational torque. So if you've got something that requires rotational torque, you're still looking at either a flex beam or a dial torque wrench to be able to do that. But for every other application, this wrench works and it's super nice to train with. Um, if you're doing this as a hobby at home, are you going to pony up the big money for one of these? Probably not. If you're working on cars every day, is this something that's probably worth owning? I would say it is. And that's about all I really want to cover on these. Um, there are probably some other options, but as far as working on cars go, I think I've covered it fairly well. Uh, what you're going to buy really depends on what you want to do with them. So. I own all of these and I use them with different frequencies. So uh, obviously these are expensive tools with the exception of the flex beam. So you want to treat them very carefully and respect the fact that they cost a lot of money. But that's it. Thanks for watching and I'll see you later.